from Stamp and Eat and welcome back to my craft room for another crafting session with me. And this week I am super excited to be showing you how to make this gorgeous little box. What not to do so that you don't tear your DSP like I did. And how to put together this cute little flower design that can be as a table favor, it can be as a hostess gift. Mine is going to a very dear friend of mine. We are traveling up this weekend to a demonstrator only event and we're staying with some friends of ours that we've known for probably 28 years already. And so these are not quite her colors, but she loves florals. So I'm sure she will appreciate it. And I'm gonna pop some treats in there for her just as a gesture of our appreciation for hosting us. The colors that we're using today is going to be wild weed, fresh freesia, moody mauve and garden green and I have a story about the garden green and we're going to be using some designer series paper and fresh freesia cardstock and I'll give you the measurements of those shortly and the designer series paper is from the Fresh as a Daisy Suite, which is in the annual catalog. And you've obviously seen me use this so many times because I adore flowers. And so I'm sorry if this is a, <laughs> no, I'm not sorry. You're gonna see me use this suite a lot this year. I absolutely love it. And what you perhaps cannot see, so let me just go closer, is I just put some detail on this little piece of um, designer series paper and I used the basic borders and I used that one in particular. Now there's quite a bit of detailed work in this little box. Well there is and there isn't. It's probably my own fault because I did what I always tell my customers to do. Well I didn't do what I always tell my customers to do and that's take a photo. When you've got your layout take a photo then disassemble it and glue it together and guess what I didn't do. The layout was beautiful and it was slightly different to this. So this is not how the original one looked. But anywho, we will still make the box and this design. I've pre-cut just about everything. I will show you how to pre-cut that. Um, but if you don't have this designer series paper and if you don't have the cardstock and if you don't have these colors and if you don't have these die sets, it's okay. Use what you have in your stash. What I want to teach you here today is how to make a box and how to decorate a box. So you don't have to use what I have, but if you want to follow along, follow along and you do have what I am using, that is great. If you want to follow along and you live in New Zealand and you don't have what I am using and you don't yet have a demonstrator, a stamping up demonstrator, then you can click the shop with me link below and grab these items. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to put this all to the side. For the base of your box, you're going to need a piece of A4 cardstock cut in a square at seven and a half by seven and a half. And we will score those shortly. And for your lid, you're going to need a piece of designer series paper or cardstock um, six inches by six inches and that will be scored at one and a half uh, sorry one and a quarter inches on all four sides six by six that is a perfect way to use your six by six designer series papers but it's also a brilliant way to use your um, 12 by 12 designer series papers because then you will get four lids out of that if I've done my sums right I think it's four okay now what did I do to tear the designer series paper? Well, the first thing I did was I actually used the scoring blade on my paper trimmer and I went up and down twice. So don't do that. Um, and I've tried to put it together. So hopefully this one I'm making with you will end up being my friend's gift. If you have a paper scoring tool, which is usually what I use, I'm going to use the broader tip. There's a narrow one and a broad one, and I'm going to make my score lines at two inches, turn it, two inches, turn it, two inches, turn it, and two inches. And you should have 
a square in the middle and we'll cut that shortly so I'm going to just set that to the side and then I'm just turning this over for now and we're going to do it at one and a quarter now my hubby told me last week my camera lens was too close so I've left it today so hopefully that's okay Rich if you're watching this does it feel better for you and does it feel better for you viewers out there all right so one and a quarter as I was yakking on each corner turn them around and I can see this is a lot gentler to be honest I do prefer using my paper scoring tool um, when I make anything like boxes and scoring now you'll have a valley and you'll have a hill we want the hill inside so fold and burnish all your score lines with your bone folder okay and we'll repeat that on the side here of course you can turn this design in series paper over if you want I'm <laughs> pausing thinking do I want to do it mm, I think I'll stay with what I've done let's just copy it exactly eh all right now do you see on the bottom you've got a square go up the right line score line you'll have a flap now I want you to come in and wedge to that next score line and pull that away so you should have a flap like this turn your paper around and repeat so you're not cutting this off because those will become your flaps very very soon okay and the last one I've got a feel good and uh, feel good story. I think you could call it a feel good story. Just want to bring in my mat. Uh, actually, no. Let's just do all the cutting first, and then we'll do the gluing. So we discovered on the weekend at some time. I don't know what day it was that my husband's sunglasses that clip onto his reading glasses and the glasses he needs when he drives. They're in a little black case, um, so they went missing. They, I noticed, I think it was on Saturday when I came back from teaching card class, that his case, glasses case, was missing. Oh my gosh, did we go looking for it everywhere, everywhere. Pockets, looked in the car. It was his company, the, the business car that he drives um, to Hamilton twice a week, um, where he had last worn the glasses. Sorry, while I'm yakking, just pop your glue on this straight side. Turn it and just keep doing it on the straight side. Okay, so just keep doing that on all four sides. And we looked everywhere. Couldn't find the glasses. Right, now I just, I will pause my story. This flap that we've just cut, you're going to bring this rectangle into the flap. And they're going to match. And you're just going to go around like that. Okay. So anyway, we were, we, I won't say we turned the house upside down, but we looked in every single jacket pocket. We looked in every single, um, everywhere. We went through all the three, all three cars, my car, his car, the work car. Nah, nothing to be found. Even yesterday afternoon when we went for our walk, we went, I went and I looked under the car and because it stands in the street. Nah, nothing. Looked in the car, got him to move his seats. Nah, nothing. Anyway, so this morning he had to drive to Hamilton. And it had been raining overnight. And as he was walking up the drive to leave, I was just praying. Lord, please, 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 please. Can you please just make it that these um, glasses can be found? Now, you see how much better that seam was? Because... I didn't go with my paper trimmer so there's your lid okay we'll come back to my story there we go perfect fit isn't that stunning okay so there's our little box and of course I'm gonna pop some treats in there for my friend I'll put some tissue paper in there maybe some tea bags some chocolates 
um, bath bomb salts. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Okay, let's keep working on our project while I tell you my story. And I had hardly finished praying for my husband. So here's a piece of designer series paper, which, by the way, is the opposite of that, which I just put on the border. And that's going to go at an angle like that. And we're going to build our little flowers. So the flowers are from the... Put them all here. Just give me a moment. I used the cheerful daisies. I cut out the big one and I'm like this in white. And I don't want all of them. I just want the big one. And I just want... The little one so I'm just going to cut this off okay so I want that one and I only want this guy the rest you can use for a different project um where was I in my story so he came down the drive he went up to the car came down the drive and I was in the bedroom and I could see immediately in his hand was his glasses case Somebody had picked them up on the road and put them on his windscreen wiper because it had been raining overnight and they knew that he would need to wipe his windscreen or that when he got in the car he would see it hopefully on the windscreen and it was soaking wet which is fine because it can be dried but I was blown away by the fact that we'd been there yesterday hadn't seen it for looking and there it was so whether it had been picked up immediately on the Thursday where he last saw it, um, whether it had been picked up yesterday, we have no idea. But the person that picked it up was very kind and very honest and put it there for Rich to find it. And I was just blown again, once again, by the fact that we live in a country where that kind of thing happens. So good story, eh? Okay. While I was doing all my yakking, I got all my pieces ready. So you need to cut out of the piece of fresh freesia or whatever color cardstock you used. You're going to use that scrap and you need to cut the base of the fresh freesia or any other flower for that matter that you have. Then you're going to assemble the white of this. And I always like to use the three um, little bottom petals. But we're also going to blend it a little bit in the center with some um, wild wheat. So I'm going to do that with you. So we're just going to blend it. Whoops, that's gone a bit ballistic. Oopsie. All right, and we'll just, oh my gosh, I've got it all in my hands now. All right, that's no cool. And we'll just, I must have touched it when I opened it. All right, fresh, fresh, uh, What's that color? Wild wheat. And then on this guy, so that's hopefully not going to be too noticeable, we're going to blend. We're going to blend. Put those away. Put those away. Put those away. You need to take the tops of the daisies and you're going to need to take your fresh freezer. And what I did was... I just came in with my fresh freezer and I just went like this. I seem to be doing a lot of this technique. Okay. Because it seems to make a difference. It's not as crazy bold. All right. And then on the petals, I just want to show you how to do all of that because I'm going to assemble this off camera because it's going to take too long. I used my Winker Stella. Is that in the camera? I used my Winker Stella. Just get the shiny because when I did it for my project, I made a big blob. And it's going to give it a little bit of shimmer. I just wanted to step it up just a little bit. Oops, there comes a bit more than I need. Okay. And I might just add some on this one. All right. Now, if you need to know how to assemble the daisies, check out the video at the top of this link. You're just going to put these guys, where are they now? These guys like so, 
and this guy like so okay and that's what you need to do for that one this one the same story it goes like this and this one goes hopefully that's going to cover my big blob otherwise we'll have to recut it only just okay so you're going to assemble those guys you're also going if you have them have another floral that i cut from the paper florist dies and it was that one and i'm coloring that in moody mauve so i'll do that quickly and then i'll just run through some other it's a bit darker but that's okay cool it will be pretty to have a bit of a contrast all right and you're going to glue that together and i popped some bling on that i used from the dots the in color what are they called iridescent pastel gems okay so i'm going to assemble these flowers and then i'm going to show you how to put them together on your box okay they are all ready and assembled so let's start putting these together you're going to need to cut out two leaves a gold leaf whatever bling you have and um, i'm going to just quickly blend that with the garden green now in my first leaf i first tried old olive it looked disgusting and then i thought oh surely it's got to be mossy meadow and it looked disgusting and then i was like oh for goodness sake what green is it and i went and did what i'm always telling everybody else to do and I looked at the back of the piece of paper that you get with your DSP and it said garden green <laughs> I was like oh yeah okay and then when I put the garden green together it looked amazing so there you go okay so I want to place my gold and I want to place my white like that then I'm going to place my daisy sort of there this one needs bling, so let me just quickly pop some bling on it. So I'm just, oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. Right, let's just get the bling up. I don't know where my take your pick tool's gone, so. Bling, right in there. Okay. Oh, that looks pretty now that it's a different color and darker. We're going to pop this garden green in like that. And then this one is going to go in dimensionals like that. All right, I'm just assembling this here for you and I'll put this all together after the event. But I'm just putting this all together for now. Okay, moving this to the angle like so so do remember when you have a play as you're playing if you like it and you're happy with how it's turned out take a photo all right now the only thing that i need to show you before i love and leave you is how to make the bow all right so the bow over there you're taking some gold twine you're wrapping twice and then twice and using my ribbon scissors I'm going to take them off my fingers like this my fingers are so sticky from this glue so i've got them held i'm now looking for the end of the twine i'm taking it around man sticky sticky fingers and I'm turning this in. Oh no, it's not working. Okay, hold on. Hold it there. It's not working because my fingers are too sticky. And I can't feel what I'm doing. Right, you're going to go around. And I don't have time this morning to run to the bathroom and wash them. I need to be finished i've got a 10 a.m webinar i need well not webinar but onboarding of a 
new team member I need to get to. So, right, okay. So here you've got your bow. Okay, just tighten that. You've got all your different threads. You can cut some of them off if they annoy you, which is what I did. Just strategically pick the, the right ones. And then I just fluff these guys. So oh, this is coming apart. Oh, no. Okay. I'll pause and do it. Yeah, done. Once I knew nobody was watching me. <laughs> okay, so done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take my scissors, see, and rough these guys up. Okay, just loosen those fibers. That's it. And then you're just going to take a glue dot and put that where you want it over there. Like so. Alrighty, that's us. 3D project today. Hope you liked it and um, hope you have fun making something similar. And <laughs> the bow looks terrible. I will fix it. I will fix it and make sure it looks pretty. But I do need to get going. I need to get going. So I will fix that and make sure that there's a beautiful photo for you to look at. Okay, thanks for crafting with me. I hope you've had fun. And don't forget, if you haven't yet subscribed to my newsletter, Go ahead and do that. There are amazing tips, techniques, project inspiration, weekly inspiration from me to you. And um, I'd love to see you there. So thanks for crafting with me. I look forward to seeing you next week. And remember until we meet again to stamp, eat, sleep, repeat. Bye.